When the Urskex arrived on Thra, they sought to educate themselves about the strange new planet they had been transported to. At first, they wished to live in harmony with the creatures and the beings of Thra, continuously seeking out Agra in order to aid and assist them with their journey and their brand new lives as residents and light bringers of the planet. One of these Urskex was a figure named Tekti. Being extremely well versed in the ways of the universe, he began to teach Agra many things, including the movements of the skies and stars. And in return, Agra introduced him to the secrets of the earth, the rocks, trees, rivers, and metals. Tekti was so fond of her, he even built her the great observatory we see today. However, upon the splitting of the Urskex, Tekti became Skektek, the scientist we all know so well. And along with developing his evil persona, he betrayed Agra in favor of winning Skekso's approval. Although he always secretly regretted it, as she was the only other immortal being on Thra who shared his interest, he turned his back to her and locked himself away in the crystal castle with the others forever. Once bound to the castle, he found quite a different life overcoming him. Being the weakest of his kind, he often fell victim to abuse and mockery from the others, who were far more physically dominating. This turned the scientist away from the stars and caused him to develop both a persecution complex and a very violent temper. When not lashing out at the castle servants, he spent all of his time deep down in the Chamber of Life, studying various creatures and animals that he collected. The years of mental torture riddled his mind and turned him into quite a curious sociopath. He became so obsessive that he soon cared nothing for the feelings or lives of any others and spent most of his time experimenting on them. Along with his creatures, his obsessive behavior also mutilated his own body. His lack of physical prowess and constant abuse from the others caused him to incorporate a number of cybernetic enhancements, including a mechanical arm and leg, as well as a series of transparent tubes which would replace his jugular so he could more easily study his own blood flow. When the Crystal of Life began to fail, Skektek soon put all of his differences behind him and started a new task as another series of scientific experiments. Now it was time for him to save lives. After a very educated suggestion from the Chamberlain, Skektek soon realized that he must provide the crystal with an energy source, one that it could feed on to produce life energy. Unfortunately for him though, this new breakthrough would not be the end of his torment. Skeksil, the very same Skeksis who had given him the idea for essence, tried to steal the last bottle from him, and after the snake-tongued Chamberlain passed the blame to him, he fell victim to another physical deformation. But this time, it wasn't a choice of his own, but the sadistic ritual master and his infamous peeper beetle. Viewing everything in his life as a scientific advantage, Skektek took his new deformed eye in stride, and instead crafted himself a new mechanical eye which made things, as he put it, better than ever. But his hatred for the Chamberlain grew even stronger. Unlike his fellow Skeksis, he was the only one besides Skekayuk to understand that the Crystal's failure was due to their constant abuse. He even attempted to derail Skekso's plans because he knew that any further consumption of the Crystal would surely throw Thra completely out of balance. But his cowardly nature reserved any dominant action, and in the end, he bent to Skekso's will, as he always did. Sadly, when the Gelfling finally made their way down into the Chamber of Life, he used his new inventions to literally feed them to the Crystal, and the energy it gave off produced this new essence they so desired, which could be consumed like wine, revitalizing every fiber of their beings and granting them the very long lives they thought they deserved. When the Chamberlain introduced the Grunax, who were equally as sad and tortured as the scientist himself, he used their skills as mechanics to repair and improve his devices for harvesting essence, and soon he ordered 50 Gelfling every trine to be captured and drained. Skekso was so impressed and eager to fill his beak 
that he even offered him a seat at the banquet table so that Skektek could feel more a part of the group. However, his past would soon return to haunt him once again, when Skekmal the hunter arrived at the castle near death, injured by Archer. They used all of the essence they had, but it was of no use, until Mother Augur herself was strapped to the chair, offering her own life to save the resistance and reluctantly Skekmal's life. When Augur and the scientist finally met eye to eye once more, she reminded him of their meaningful relationship, now buried in the past, to which the scientist simply replied, Another world, another time. When Skekmal suddenly returned to life, he found the scientist lavishing himself on Skekso's throne while the others were away at battle, which caused Skekmal to belittle him by calling him weak and cowardly. Although he tried to defend himself, Skekmal wouldn't allow him to escape his meek nature, keeping him under their thumb where he belonged. Enraged by this encounter, and desperately wanting to prove his companions wrong, he viciously killed the Grunaks and used Arathum bodies, Grunak muscles, and even energy from the Crystal of Life itself to begin construction on what would become one of the most feared beings in all of Thra, the Gartham. During the Gartham Wars, Skektek's inventions aided the Gartham Master in the complete annihilation of all Gelfling clans and races, and soon after, he formed very strong political alliances with both the Gartham Master and the Slave Master. Preceding the wars, he returned to his chambers to further progress his draining methods, soon adding mirrors to distort the crystal's light so that his victims would become mindless slaves instead of being destroyed. But because the Gelfling had all been wiped out, Podling Essence was all they could acquire, and this produced horrible results. When two Gelfling were discovered to still be alive, the female Kira was successfully captured and brought to the Chamber of Life to be drained. But Kira's powerful connection to nature allowed her to call on all of the animals and creatures in Skektek's lab. At long last, the imprisoned beings had their ultimate final revenge, as Skektek was pushed into the fiery chasm and plunged to his death beneath the very crystal he had dedicated his life to. Skektek's counterpart, who perished along with him, was ur the alchemist, and like all the Uru, he shared an equal and opposite relation. Like Skektek, ur was forever lost in his own world, mostly separate from the other mystics, constantly puzzling himself with changing the forms of different substances. Two of his limbs were also artificial and made from wood, scars he endured from the scientist's dark experiments. The light and dark balance came from ur natural experiments and Skektek's unnatural experiments. The most tragic aspect of the scientist's life was his very human and humble attributes that were completely corrupted by his transformation into a Skeksis. Although he lost touch with his former self, his isolation from the others proved he desired to be different, and there was still a part of him that longed to return to his true form and renew his important relationship with Agra. But alas, after a lifetime of torture in so many different ways, he perished into darkness forever, never to reunite with the Urskex, and never to find peace. Well, there you have it, my friends, the very sad and quite Shakespearean tale of Skektek the Scientist. Now it's time for you guys to leave all of your thoughts and opinions down below in the Great White Void. Why is Skektek your favorite Skeksis? As always, until next we meet, take care, and I'll see you guys back here for the next video very soon. Silence! Silence animals!